are here. Welcome to the next installment of the Life Coaching Hangout at Hangout coachinghangout.com. Um, today is a open-ended, hey, who knows what's going to happen kind of call. Um, and that after just, we were talking just before we went live, Kelly was talking about the fact that, is it Mercury has gone retrograde? Is that it? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And which can often lead to technical issues, which oh, so much makes sense to me because um, <laughs> if, 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 this had, if this hangout had been four hours earlier, we wouldn't have a coaching hangout site for it to be on at, the, at all. Um, we still don't have a Facebook comments thing working. Uh, I'm not really sure what the story is, but we're getting there, and we'll make it work. Um, yeah, I've just been, it's just been one of those weeks. Uh, me and me and um, my my sites have not been my friend this week. So anyway, uh, we had an entire meltdown of databases getting lost and having to get recovered and rebuilt and retransferred and reestablished. And, um, but this one's working, so we're happy, and that's great, and you can't leave any comments because Facebook comments doesn't work. Um, and, and yeah, so there we go. Hi, welcome everybody. If you're watching live on the page, then you see me yapping array for no productive reason whatsoever. Um, so welcome, and today I thought we'd just open it up to questions and answers and get a little feel of where people are at, and you can tell I'm, I've been up since 3 a.m. as well. It's now noon, so um, I'm basically done with my work day, and it's noon, so I don't know what that says. Um, so, nap. So, it says nap. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, when this is done, I've got another call in two hours with somebody who's on with somebody, um, and then after that call, it is going to be nap time. Um, I don't know. Thanks for catching that, Kelly. You make me fun. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. So that all being said, I have nothing productive to contribute today other than taking questions. So I hope you guys have questions. Oh, so that's our cue, is it, to ask a question? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yes, that's your cue, sorry. Um, and so now we will open it up to questions from everyone. Right, okay. Um, well, I would expect possibly the um, marketing budget uh, has probably been spent, has it, Sean? Um, having listened to the American elections, the amount of money that's been spent recently <laughs> on marketing must be huge. Yeah, over um, a, a, a 1.4 billion dollars, something along those lines to, for the elections, I think it was. Um, yeah, we could have probably bought a few small countries. Instead, we ran a bunch of really negative ads that didn't really change the landscape of our political system uh, whatsoever. Right. Uh, yeah, one house, one house is still controlled by one party, one house is still controlled by the other, and we still have the same president. Um, so it was it was money spent, and I'm not gonna I'm, I I I'm I will say and this is all I'm gonna say about the elections from my perspective. I'm disappointed in some of the referendums that occurred in my current state in in California. I'm unhappy with the outcomes of those more than I am about what happened in the national election. Um, so I'll leave it at that. No. What I was going to suggest is maybe they should have um, used Google Plus. <laughs> Might have saved them a few money. <laughs> I think you're right. I would love to see Google Plus and a presidential debate pair up, where the pre everybody's just, the presidential folks are sitting at home, the moderators sitting at home, and they're all just on Google Plus, and people can watch it live on YouTube and ask questions. I think you have come up with a brilliant approach to the next presidential debate. <laughs> Sean for president. Uh, no. no. No, not that part. No. <laughs> the Google no. Plus part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be fun, though, Sean. You might consider that. We'll vote for you. <laughs> uh, um, I'm, I, and I and I would I would appreciate. Thank you for your support. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the the background checks, the digging into my past. Um, I actually have a friend who's writing a book, hundred reasons why I can never be president, and it's the hundred things she's done that would not go over well in um, media. So I think that's quite entertaining. So I have my own list of things that I'm happy to not be publicly known. Let's let it, leave it at that. Would you advise Romney with any coaching tips? <laughs> if we nice. can get off of politics, I'll stay on here. If we're going to talk about politics, I'm going to have to go to the grocery store instead. 
<laughs> Sorry. I'm just saying. I'm, I was just I'm trying to encourage Sean. <laughs> No, I, uh, nice, to, nice way to bring it back into coaching. As far as I'm concerned, the elections are finished. We now move forward. Um, and, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay. That's, that's where I stand with it. I, yeah, I, I'll say one last thing on politics, and it was what I posted on my Facebook wall last night after the election results came through, and it said, hopefully now that the election is done, I can start following some of my friends that I've been ignoring for months because – you'll stop complaining about everything on the planet and we can just go back to being friends. So, uh, yeah. I noticed you said both sides, though. Oh, yeah. I had, I, both on the Democrats and the Republicans, I had folks that were just unpleasant. So I'm hoping my friends will just get back to being friends again. So that's what I'm hoping will happen across the board. And politics are now cut off. No more on this conversation. So, um, Kelly, what's going on in your world? How's coaching going for you? Coaching is good. I got... Um, invited by, well, I have, you know, I, I told you about the book, um, The Secret of Letting Go. Yes. That I've been yep. reading. I'm reading for the third time. And the company actually contacted me to be an affiliate of theirs and share, ooh, this is a good co coaching question for you, and share the um, an audio album, which is like six and a half hours long, with my my email community to not only assist them in getting new people and also help spread my message and it was an honor because they didn't know me before <laughs> and they checked I emailed them and they checked out my website and said that's you know they were looking for like-minded people and the most interesting thing is that I get to figure out now they are offering three different audios to share with my email community or as a bonus gift or whatever I want to do with it and I'm choosing between them now what I what I ultimately want to coach on is I want to coach people who are already on a spiritual path not necessarily religious not religious but more spiritual getting to know themselves and who they are and why they're here and that kind of thing and not everyone I come in contact with is at that level so I have a spiritual coaching program and also one that's a little bit more for everybody. And I was getting to choose which of their audio albums I would provide. And one is about getting to know yourself better, which is what I choose to coach on. But one is about getting the relationship you want. And I'm thinking that just because of the title alone and so many relationship coaches and relationship, everything's out there. <laughs> it's, it's a huge market. And I'm thinking of going with that one because I know it's going to teach people how to get to know themselves better as well because that is how you attract the right person. But I, I have a decision to make on people, you know, giving an audio album that helps people get to know themselves better or going the relationship direction, which is what people are jumping on the bandwagon of right now. Well, I think so. So my first question to you would be, what is the, do you have a single list or first of all, hello, Fiona, welcome. Now, my question to Kelly is, um, I always like to welcome folks when they arrive, uh, is, is your list a one, like, do you have a singular list, or does your list have some division to it? Um, are they kind of divided out in any manner? Right now, I have one list. They get my weekly tips, and since I'm just starting my coaching practice, over there because I've been coaching with UIBC but I'm just starting my own coaching practice so I'm in the process of promoting and just really really tightening up my niche and my ideal prospect okay um, so you have that you have so the reason I asked that is it might be beneficial for you to go ahead and just ask your list formally like which hey I have so I have a free gift I want to give you and you, I'd love to know which one you'd like to get, and flat out, just flat out ask them. I have one that's on relationships, or one on getting to know yourself better. Which of the free gifts would you like to get? And then what you can do is, as people reply, um, is your list within, say, I contact or something along those lines? A Weber. A Weber, great. Um, you should be able to actually create new lists and put those, so you can then separate them and start to really have specifically defined lists. Because it's going to make marketing and content communicating with them better if you have half your list wants the relationship and half your list doesn't. You know that then any relationship stuff you can start working with just those already pre-qualified folks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so instead of trying to choose for them, I would go with, since you have the ability and the right to be able to share both items, is that correct? Uh, I get to pick one. Oh, you only get to pick one. You can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, I would probably, I would go with relationship. I think it's going to resonate more, even though the other one matches your business. So mm -hmm. um, if it depends on if you get kind of white label rights where you can use it and then package it however you want. No, I would be sending them to to his website, which is fine with me. I just I'm just thinking that I know for a fact, absolutely a fact, that in order to have relationships that that work well, whether it's family or a romantic relationship or just friendships, it's really important to nurture yourself and be the best you you can be otherwise you're always needy and you're always looking for someone else to fulfill you so that I'm absolutely positive about that and I'm sure that this relationship audio uh, um, audio that he's offering uh, it's like I said it's like six and a half hours long I'm sure that it talks about that in that audio I'm sure it does because that is the only way to actually you know be fulfilled within yourself so you're not always searching for other people to complete you because that never worked and um, so I'm, I'm just thinking with all the relationship stuff out there, people don't actually know yet necessarily that they need to develop a great relationship with themselves. And I'm kind of going in that, I am going in that direction, but I think relationships are a hot topic people jump on immediately. And I think you're right, and I think it also could be, um, I mean, it's, it's a nice compliment to, to why, how people have found you and why they're interested in you. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, 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 I don't want to say it's, an, an addition to what you offer because I kind of I understand that your coaching can help them also in their relationships but it it's it's not necessarily defined as relationship coaching correct uh, and so it's it's almost that fun bonus you're giving them just because they like you so there is a there is a benefit to going with something that is not necessarily your niche but still connected to your niche mm -hmm. uh, and it'll act both in two ways as as an upsell for an affiliate program to him but it doesn't come over as a blatant upsell. It comes over as I'm giving you this gift and if you like what you've learned you can get more through the book. Um, but it also is a great way for you to, for your folks to feel like they're getting value and it might, as they realize that there's issues with the relationship, they may want to come back to coaching or get other coaching that you then could assist them with. So and I think the relationship one, as you talk it out, makes a lot more sense to me. I don't know, what does the rest of the group think? Anybody have a <coughs> going along those lines? Yeah, I was thinking uh, along the lines of the karmic marketing in that you are the center of your business and how you relate to other things in the world is really important because what goes out comes back and one must always start with oneself first in terms of relationships. What do I give out? And then how do people relate to what you give out? So I, I would think really um, it would be really a, an excellent tool to fit in with the karmic marketing kind of um, that we've learned at UIBC too. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and you could even use that because you know that fairly well. You could even talk about how this is a piece of it is that relationships with other people. and. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I have to listen to the audio, but I'm wondering, is it just a, a romantic relationship or is it just a... I don't think so. I don't think it can be based on what he teaches. Yeah, that so that, that's why I'm thinking it would be in alignment with what I already what I already coach because people, you know, I coach people in relationships occasionally. Um, anyway, it just goes that direction. And we always come back to their... their their inability to find fulfillment in their relationship, however great it may have been or will be later, is because they're looking for someone else to fill a need in them that they can fill from within. They just have to focus on internal, you know, internal things that they have instead of always looking outside themselves to be happy. And once they do that, they can be not only happier with the person they're with, if that's the right person, but they'll also attract other people who are complete people instead of people always looking for someone to fill their you know to always looking to get they'll co they'll come to people who want to give and want to be complete and then it, the two together make a complete make a third entity whether it's um, like I have a couple new really fun female friends here in San Diego that I hang out with who are on a spiritual path and we're having a great time and even those relationships you know we're careful to be sure that we are 
learning about ourselves all along. We catch each other on different things that we can improve upon and stuff like that. And it's really fun because we're all growing in the same direction together. So whatever kind of relationship it is, the title of this is The Genesis of Love, Relationship Magic in Heaven and on Earth. And I have a feeling it has to do with all kinds of relationships. And I did email them to just be sure of that. But I think that's going to be great because the other one is the liberation of self and the other one is journey to a whole new life and I don't know that people are going to connect with that necessarily right off the bat like they would with anything with the word relationship in it yeah. <laughs> can, I just, can I add something to that and I think this is a really interesting area and I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because as I start to evolve my coaching practice I know very much that relationships is, is going to be the foundation of everything so my my coaching practice is going to specialize in career development and career management for young professionals and leadership. And so from my experience, all the issues that come up for these young professionals, 90% of them are related to relationships, interpersonal relationships and how they relate to themselves. Um, so I think that's a fascinating area and, and I'd like to learn more about it uh, around how you're um, focusing on it and um, just learn more in generally about uh, whether people are seeking out specialist relationship coaching um, because, yeah, it, like I said, it, it really connects with where I'm heading with my coaching as well. Okay. So yeah. You're a good coach, so I'm really excited you're, you're doing that too. And with the young professionals, I mean, especially the young professionals, there, there are so many people who never – never learned relationship skills because they're always texting and you know there's you you see someone I mean, this is kind of a different example but I mean you go into some some business and maybe it's a store or whatever and there's a younger person there and they don't even make eye contact and you say hi and they say nothing you say thank you they say nothing I mean they have no communication skills whatsoever they just can't wait to get back to their phone to text somebody how much yeah, they hate their job yeah. most likely so it's yeah. it's disturbing and I think young professionals with the relationships they'll need to build not only with the people in their workplace but their you know uh, colleagues people they're going to be doing business with maybe in other companies and their families and everything everything like you said Wendy revolves around relationships and what I'm coaching is all of that starts <laughs> with the relationship with ourselves but I don't know that too many people are there yet you know and I, I know I can get the word out but I'm just I'm just thinking this relationship one probably like you said is going to be the one that attracts people simply with the words relationship magic. I mean, they may not know it's about getting to know themselves. <laughs> so that's a yeah. good way to to you know yeah. deliver um, to sell them what they want and deliver what they need. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, just going along the the other two discs. One was called liberation of self. I mean, one of the things I think Wendy touched upon there was the fact that, or I think you raised it, when people are not able to look at one another in the eyes in terms of relationships, do you feel that that's partly the fact of the fear that they're not able to communicate and therefore the relationship never is able to, to build and develop because the energy that they have is one of enclosed sort of fear? And so maybe... Uh, if you can negotiate with this chap to develop the first of all the relationship and then develop the side on liberating of self, you would be able to kind of develop a whole um, coaching program from that. I does think that so. Sense? Yes, it does. And I think you're right. I think people are, are they're so connected with technology they really don't know how to communicate and when somebody like me comes into a store and I'm like hey how are you today and they're like fine you know or hope you leave my line soon so I don't have to talk to you or look at you in the eye. Um, right. it's, not all of them are like that but the ones that aren't are rare and I always compliment them it's like wow thanks for looking me in the eye or something um, but I, I, I think it makes them uncomfortable because and they may not even know it's a fear you know of not knowing how to communicate yeah. but I don't yeah. think they do know and I think you're right I think that is a fear an underlying fear and it just makes them uncomfortable for anyone to actually want to have a real conversation with them yeah yeah particularly someone of your particular character who has quite a powerful radiation um, you know and it can actually in a way sometimes be um, 
overpowering for people in that because they're not able to handle the kind of the energy that you have because of maybe your experience and what you've been able to liberate in yourself it kind of throws them off and um, I know that's just my own kind of adding up of sometimes what happens to people is that you because you have um, a intention to do something you radiate that intention and it kind of throws people out and so they're therefore not able to make com that contact I agree I with you yeah I agree completely and I I've always said this I used to say this in my personal safety classes when I was doing that people step as everyone steps aside for the person who knows where they're going yeah. so if you act like you're confident even if you're not having that best the great of day but you walk with confidence and you you're just headed somewhere even if you don't yeah. know where like instead of wandering around a mall if you act like you're there intentionally even attackers who look for weakness they won't go after you because you look like you know what the heck's going on. And so, yes, I totally agree with that. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, my, so, uh, what? Sorry, go on. I was just, my question was going to be simply with, with this person that you're, you're kind of partnering with, it sounds like to them it's just kind of an, a way to enhance an affiliate program, but it sounds like there's an opportunity for something much greater than that. Um, have you ever had that conversation or even floated that idea with them? Not yet. Uh, the way they even knew about my website was I purchased the ebook and I got it on my Kindle. And at the end, they 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 give a lot of things away. This um, guy is um, he, he he sells audios for like five dollars and ninety five cents. You know, he he's everything's very reasonably priced because and they it's a nonprofit, so they're basically just paying for what it costs to make things everything they have is very reasonable I would absolutely love to be a coach for people who come into their company and say you know wow I really need someone to kinda of hold me accountable to keep tuned in and use and implementing these um, principles and so I emailed him back today this guy who contacted me I emailed him well the he knew me because the ebook at the end of the book it says um, to put this you know like the fifth word on page such and such into this blank on the website and we'll send you an actual CD and so I did that on the Kindle and it didn't work because it wasn't the same page as it would be in a regular book so I emailed them and said hey here's my order and everything and it's not the same as a Kindle so you know I'd love to get the CD and he wrote back and apologized said, oh I send it out today and all that stuff so that's how he knew because my email had positivewomenrock.com on the bottom of it Nice. And then he was, yeah, so I think that's how he found me. And then I left glowing comments on their Facebook page, of course, because I just fell in love with the book. And so I know that when they sell things, they're so reasonably priced. I mean, I, I feel that they're very, very authentic in that they really just want to get the information out to people. You know, they their prices and everything, and he gives so much away free. There's tons of free audios on their website. And... I have a feeling that if they had people coming in who just need to, someone to kind of guide them through implementing the principles, I would love to be that person. So I told them I have an affiliate program as well for my coaching and what I would ultimately love to do is this, you know, and I, I told them is good. And so I'm anxious to hear back from him. Yeah, because I mean, it sounds like what you have is an opportunity to launch a coaching program connected with something you really believe in without actually having to recruit the clients yourself. Kind of like UIBC, which has been a godsend. Exactly. <laughs> yes, um, and I don't mind recruiting people. It would be nice to have a pool to recruit from where I know they're on the same page. But I've noticed even on Facebook, if I share something, if I put, I put, make my own graphics to put on Facebook, and I'll put something up there that has, you know, some glowing, wonderful saying. Well, then everyone shares it, which is wonderful. However, if I put something up there that hands you responsibility for your life, nobody comments, nobody shares it, and few people like it. So people yeah. don't, you know, I'm thinking, okay, am I the only one on this page? I know I'm not. Wendy and I are kind of on the same page and there's some other people I know who you know are heading in the direction of really knowing ourselves and assisting other people and really developing the skills and the the things that are already inside us to be able to have very healthy communication a very healthy relationships so our whole life is better I'm just looking for where the heck are those people <laughs> and if they're over at their website and they could use a coach 
to help coach them, oh my gosh, that would be that would be perfect. So it's funny, the book actually teaches us to let go of the, the all the negative junk and it shows you exactly how it just worked miraculously for me. Um, and yesterday when I got this email, I thought, wow, I'm not big enough to, to to do that. You know, I think they're expecting me to maybe do this or that. I don't think I know enough to do that. And it, then I thought, well, that's my false self telling me all these negative things. But my true self is saying, heck yeah, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Jump on it. So I did, even though it was a little bit scary. Nice. Excellent. Well done. Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's an amazing kind of lesson too that when you're following kind of who you are and being true to yourself, it can actually really lead to amazing opportunities. Where even if they, I mean, you you might be able to just get them to say yes. Feel free to come and um, if well, like maybe I don't know. Do they do a newsletter? Yes, they do. Fabulous newsletter every week. And could you even work with them to possibly just do a solo? Ooh. Yeah. Coaching. Good idea. Ooh, bet. <gasps> yeah, and it could actually, it could actually be geared, <laughs> geared toward, you know, if you're working with these principles and everyone in your, you know, maybe you're the only one in your life that's doing it. Here's a way where you can be held accountable and work with other people going in the same direction. Because exactly. this guy's in Oregon. His name is Guy Finley, F I N L E Y. He's wonderful. And he has lots of books. And I read the same one three times because I need to stay out of the shiny thing syndrome. So I just am focused on the book. And um, he just, he he's in Oregon and he does weekly talks where people can go talk to him. He has a monthly teleseminar or radio show where you can talk to him and ask him questions. He gives so much away. He's not charging for things, he just really wants to get the light out. Yes, Fiona, that was a light bulb. <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, that would be great. I think they very well may be open to that. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's one of those neat opportunities that, when, yeah, when you're open to it and you're 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 willing to see beyond just kind of that front end. Um, and it goes back to what was mentioned earlier about the idea of karmic marketing and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. Like. Because you you were just asking and wanting to work with them a little bit and willing to assist them and and you love and su want to support what they're doing, all of a sudden you now have this opportunity to really possibly create a partnership that's going to be amazing for both of you. Mm hmm. I think so. That's exciting. I'm much more excited about it now. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it was kind of scary go. before. <laughs> Understandable. And I'm, I'm glad it's. I'm glad you're feeling a little excitement about it. I think that it really does open up a really amazing opportunity for you. Mm hmm. And as I was reading the book, I was thinking, wow, what I would ultimately like to do in my life would be coach people, coaching people on these principles. And then this email came, and I instantly thought, oh, I'm too small for business for that, you know. And I put that as like, hey, what does the book teach? Oh yeah, I'm not too small. This is a perfect opportunity. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hmm. Alrighty, so we've changed Kelly's life. Who's next? <laughs> oh. That's what we do here at CoachingHangout.com. We change lives by having conversations. <laughs> Woo! What a place to be on. Alright, uh, by the way, we did, I did not get a chance to say hi to me. To, to, why do I want to call you Mia? Hello, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna just change your name to Mia. That's what we're doing. It's gonna make my life easier. Um, so yeah. So so Mindy, hi, welcome. Hi. <laughs> hi those... Mindy. Hi Fiona. Um, yeah, and, and maybe you can. And, and this is a good comment from Fiona Kelly. Is can you be a contributing author to their? their newsletter as well. Maybe tell your story about how what they've done has actually benefited you. Ooh, that gave me chills. That's a good idea. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. I solve, I solve other people's problems. Woohoo! <laughs> That's what we do here. Any, all right. Anybody else have a hot... You, know, you need a shed belt? What do you need? What can we do for you? <laughs> Can I just um, add one thing, and maybe this will take the conversation somewhere else, um, around Kelly's had this amazing energy around this guy and this, this letting go thing, which you can just feel. And Les talked about uh, Kelly radiating a certain energy and some people either embracing that or, or um, being a bit threatened by that. 
that reminds me of the Harv Eker stuff where he talks about once you start radiating at a different energy, you'll notice it and the people around you will notice it and, and either people will be drawn into you or they'll, or they'll kind of back off. Um, and I've got to say I've started to notice that a little bit. I was in a meeting last week with public servants and I came out of that meeting thinking, oh, I think I appeared a bit full on to them. <laughs> and, you know, I'd never noticed that before. Sorry, Fiona, because Fiona's a public servant. <laughs> Um, when if I'd been in a meeting with public servants before, maybe before the Harvecker stuff and the UIBC stuff, I, I probably would have been radiating in the same energy and wouldn't have even noticed. And I came out of that meeting thinking exactly that, that half were absolutely with me and following me out of the room and chasing me into the tea room. And the other half were kind of just backing off and not wanting to really engage with me and wanted to, wanting to walk away. Um, and that's where I think when you do start radiating differently, you've got to stand in your, whatever the word is, power or strength and think, no, this is how I'm going to be. I'm not going to then give in to, um, dump, not dumbing down, what's the word, lowering my energy again to fit in with the norm. Um, so I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on that. I totally agree. Yeah, I think in um, Napoleon Hill's book, Seven Laws of Success, he talks about standing in your own patch of diamonds and, you know, you are actually, what who you are and what you are radiates out from you and if you have belief in what you do, people see that as a bright cup or a, something that they want to uh, become an affiliate of or join to and it certainly, uh, it does does work, it is a real life experience. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's amazing how we, whatever your current energy is is the energy of what you're going to attract. It was um, my I got two examples of that. I'll share one is um, to add to the excitement uh, which has been my web world for the last week. Uh, my bike was stolen last week as well. Ah. Oh. And which makes me sad because it was a Gary Fisher and an amazing bike, and that's what I get for having a really good bike outside. Um, but. What happened was up to the week prior to that, I'm like, you know, I want to get on my bike, but it, it's a it's a mountain bike. It's it's a hybrid. It's not really a street bike. And where I live is great for street riding. Tons of like street bike trails, lots of great back roads that you can just go for miles and miles and never see a car and fly. So that's so I'm like, I need to get a street bike. And what happened? So I wrote what I recognized. <laughs> I manifested the di this bike being moved out of the way so that a street bike could come in. Wow. Um, and so that so that kind of stuff yeah. happens. And I've got a friend That's who had, powerful. Yeah, I had a friend who had their car stolen, and the week prior to that, they were talking about, I need a new car, I'm going to get a new car, we're all set to get a new car, but they weren't taking action on the new car, so now they have to get a new car. Um, <laughs> so sometimes those things that could be really, really negative, really, if, you, if you're able to hold that space that you were talking about less of, of really coming from that positive perspective, it's great. I'm like, oh, I, you know what? I'm going to get a much better bike now. And why would I be upset about that? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it's about where you're. It's about the energy you're bringing. So when you say I, my company's too small for that, Kelly, um, I, I, I I shudder a little, and I want to I want to yell at you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to. I just want to slap her. <laughs> you can out of love, love, of course. <laughs> Purely out of love. Yeah. Um, I feel better now. Thanks, Fiona. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like that's the first thing that pops into my head. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The whole book is about, you know, taking a look from up above. At why, did that ha why did that thought come up? Because mm. that's the self that keeps itself alive by keeping us believing that things have to be miserable and hard and suffering and all that BS. And they don't because our true self never puts us in a situation where we have a negative emotion. And that's the whole thing he teaches. So when I get this wonderful email and I feel, wow, my company, because I don't, you know, I'm still, I'm still getting to the point of having my own players to coach. I don't have them yet. And so I feel like this, these people may think I have a huge coaching, <laughs> a huge coaching practice going on, which I do, but it's with UIBC. It's not with my own practice yet. That's why I felt like, oh, I'm still too small. They don't know that. And you know, I can't be thinking that, or else it'll stay small. Yeah. yeah. Kelly, isn't isn't that just our fear? That's our protection. Yes, and that's what the book tells us how to get rid of. So that's what I immediately went to and saying, oh, that's that negative thing that I don't have to be a part of. 
Mm. So I'm going to jump at the opportunity and um, figure out, and not even figure it out. And I don't have to think about it. I just have to allow it. And then I'm sure his email back to me will be something like, you know, it, it'll go further. Because the email I sent to him was, can I please get the CD? Because <laughs> I got the ebook instead of the physical book. And that whole thing started. And I told him I was just raving about the book and I just read it the first time. And now I'm on my third time. So it's today I told him how I can't imagine, I can't believe how I read something I read yesterday and I'm a totally different person today when I read it. The, the progress and the transformation is so fast. And it's, it's so exciting that it's amazing to see that much happen that quickly. And I know for a fact that I could turn around tomorrow and someone would say, you know what, I have all these people who have read that same book and they need someone to kind of keep them accountable. Would you be up for the job? I know that can happen and I can end up with a full, you know, practice full of wonderful players who are thinking on the same lines I am, which would be a perfect fit. Yep. some. <clears throat> Alex often talks about his friend Ivan Meisner and his principle of give us gain. And I think um, certainly in the sense of what you're talking about, Kelly, is that first of all, you've been given something. And often um, to keep something, you have to give it away, they say. So by giving out of yourself to anybody you meet in the sense of give us, give us gain, you get back what it is that you give out. So hopefully that will start to attract those participants that you want oh. or who want your coach coaching. That's true. That could really be a defining moment for people where they, you know, the pe people step up and say, I didn't know this is what you were doing. Yeah. I haven't actually put it out there. I was, I was having a fear of what if people think I'm wacko or I'm too woo woo because I'm going the spiritual route. Um, but I don't mind being woo. I don't want to be woo woo. But I don't want to. I don't mind being uh, woo. <laughs> woo it up. Woo it up, girl. I don't. Go I for don't. It, Kelly. Well, so, sometimes it, I don't be? feel that I am really woo woo because I I feel like um, people I want to coach are at the point where they they know there's more to life and I can show them where that is and where it is inside them. And if I'm seen as you know a crazy woman like the the New Jersey, what is her, oh, the New Jersey, what is it, the psychic from New Jersey? She's really accurate in a lot of things, but she has giant hair and really long fingernails and gobbed on makeup. And I'm like, why do people make themselves look that way when they have a, a wonderful um, gift or talent? Some of them don't. Some are charlatans, but some of them are very gifted, yet they they look a certain way that makes people think they're wacko. <laughs> and I never, I don't want to be put in that category. So I feel like I'm not wanting to really be judged in that category. So I wanted to do the spiritual thing without people putting me in a category of people who they laugh at, I guess. Yes, that is a fear. But Kelly, that's just because they want to be noticed. Is it? Yeah. I don't notice them in the best way. I'd prefer they got rid of all the fake stuff because if you're attempting to share with people that you're real and your talent is real, why do you gob on makeup and fake fingernails and huge hair? I mean, why do you look so fake and then attempt to convince people you're real? I don't get it. There's a disconnect for me. It's a costume. It's a costume for them. It's like a clown, like the makeup for a clown. I don't get it. I mean, it's well. I, I mean, it, why, why wear a hat? It's part of kind of my identity. Maybe that's kind of just who she wants to be seen as. Uh, and, they all kind of do the same thing. I don't want to. Yeah. And, I'm not and so that, I think, but th but that's the thing. When you say you don't want to be woo woo, I don't see you as woo woo. I see you as a really no. grown who happens to be able to speak woo woo language. But <laughs> so if it? somebody thinks you're too woo woo, they're not actually the right client for you. Just like you would never really hire her because she doesn't, she rubs you wrong with the way she dresses. Um, I would hire her, and then I would ask her if I could do a quick makeover. <laughs> <laughs> but if she's happy that way, if she really, if that resonates with her and that feels good to her, I say more power to her. Like, I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I can hear how it can rub you wrong, and I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, it's just an interesting thing, like. There's, there's two sides to it. One, yes, maybe she has some insecurities that she feels that she needs to be hide behind a costume. And two, why does it matter to you how she dresses? 
Well, that's just it. See, I'm judging her on how she dresses, and I don't want to be judged. I I see that. And somebody said, "Well, she's a she's a Jersey Shore girl. That's how they dress." And I said, "Still, that's like from the nineties. They're like, "Yep, still." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Uh, one of the things, Kelly, is that spirituality means different things to different people, mm -hmm. and really, how you present yourself, it, it will attract the people that you need. It's all I, from my experience in terms of um, a sports uh, pain relief specialist. You tend to get the kind of areas that you specialize in. Uh, you don't end up getting the odd sort of strange syndromes. So when you become a specialist in something, you seem to attract just that particular kind of energy or entity or whatever you call it. So I would say that as you develop your own particular brand of speciality within what you're doing in your own spirituality, it will attract those people that you need. I think that's very true. Thank you. It's like when you wear a red shirt like you're wearing and you go out and you see everyone suddenly has a red shirt on and <laughs> you didn't see any the day before. Or when you yeah. buy a red car, you know, it's like, wow, everyone has exactly. a red car. Exactly. Yeah, it becomes part of your awareness. And the more you have an understanding of your own self, that awareness exists, you start to see it in others. It's nice. Yeah, I think, I think that's true. And um, I think that's how... I attracted this person contacting me mm -hmm. is because I'm learning about myself and um, I'm getting so much out of the book, just the book. I haven't even listened to his audios. I just didn't want to divert my focus. I know they're great and my accountability partner has been listening to him telling me how great. I'm like, no, the book, the book, I have to stick to the book because I'll do the shiny, you know, squirrel. And even though he's going to give the same message, you know, in different ways, and many more messages too. I just want to stay really focused. But that's that's the somehow in there. That's the reason why they contacted me. Okay. So you're right. I'm attracting. I'm attracting the very people I want to attract. Which is funny because yesterday when I had the first thought about being too small of a business for that, I thought that's exactly what I've had. I've noticed some of the players I coach do with UIBC. They'll be on Facebook doing the things that I'm showing them how to do, and then they'll see someone want to come and. Um, get invite them to their group that is exactly their target audience they've been looking for on f Facebook, and they'll say, "Ah, I don't want to be. I don't want to. I don't have time to be part of a, a group." I'm like, "Wait a minute! <laughs> this is the exact niche of people you have been looking for for six months on Facebook. Make time to be in the group. That is the exact thing you're doing. You yeah. know that you've been f you've been looking for, and it shows up, and you're thinking, "Yeah, I don't think I'm looking for that." But that's the whole thing. So that's that negative voice again saying. Keep looking, keep searching, keep being, you know, keep uh, being, keep suffering or keep being miserable when our authentic self would never put us in that situation ever. And we have to realize and separate those selves so that we can go with the authentic self and let go of that fake one that keeps trying to keep us miserable. It's, a, it's amazing how often we will choose to not, like, I mean, this, the, this is the great story that I always love to share of like, so there's a, a, a priest who is at his church and his town is flooding and some guys come by they're like, dude, the town's going to flood, you need to leave. He's like, no, 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 I, I prayed God's going to take care of me. And they say, okay, and then the floods come through and he has to kind of go up. He just ends up, the flood comes in and he's up on the second floor of the church and a boat comes by and offers to save him and he's like, no, no, no God's going to take care of me. And then he's sitting on top of the roof and a helicopter comes by he's like, look, the flood's still rising, you, you let us get you out of here. He's like, no, no, God's going to take care of me. And he gets to heaven, and you know, Peter's like, and he's pissed. He's like, dude, I've been praying, and God was going to take care of me. He's like, yeah, I sent you two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the idea. Like, so we're, we're so often gifted exactly what we're asking for, but because it may not be in the package we want, we say, yeah. oh, that's not it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, exactly. I want a road bike. I could say I want, a, you know, a Trek, blah, blah, blah. No, no, you know what? I don't know what bike I'm going to get, but I'm going to get a really nice road bike. Um, one of the key, and this is one of the things that, this is my manifestation tip of the day. I'm going to do that for fun. <laughs> okay. Um, but this is, this is the one thing I've learned in the world of manifestation that I think a lot of other things get wrong. There's three ways to manifest, or there's three aspects to approaching manifestation. There's the super specific, 
I want this house that this address by this date. There's the I want a house, which is kind of the general, and then there's just enjoying the energy and the feeling getting whatever you want will give you. I say I want a bike, but you know what? Maybe I don't. It's not going to be a bike. Maybe I'm going to end up getting a motorcycle and learning to ride a motorcycle, and then I don't need to ride my bike anywhere. Or maybe I get you know a unicycle and become the world's greatest road unicyclist. I don't know. <laughs> but what I know is I love being outdoors on the road on wheels, like open to the outdoors. So a bike seems to be logical. But I know what that feels like, and as long as I kind of live in that feeling of, oh, wow, it's beautiful out. I, I'm so thrilled that I get to be out on this open road. Whatever is going to get me out on the open road is going to show up. And so too often people don't let the universe do its job and just have these expectations of, all right, this is what I wanted, and I didn't get that exactly. So I wanted a house, but you know what? You gave me this one that only has three and a half baths instead of the four I wanted. Clearly, that's not what I wanted. Like, dude, you got a four-bedroom, four, three and a half bath house kind of gifted to you. Why wouldn't you run with that? And so getting too caught up in our predefined definitions of what we want actually prevents us from being able to manifest what the universe knows we actually need. Mm -hmm. So that's my rambling on for today. I'd just like to, um, and I think that's wonderful and that just makes so much sense, so thank you for that and I've written that down and I'll absolutely remember that. One example that I would like to share, uh, after UIBC2, obviously we've done some work on manifestation and I was getting right into it anyway, so I sat at um, LAX airport and manifested a business class upgrade and I got it. <laughs> so I walked onto the plane and they said, oh, you've been upgraded to business class, welcome. And I thought, oh my God, the power and manifestation. So when I come over to San Francisco on Saturday, I have to get to the airport early so I can manifest another upgrade coming um, over again. Uh, to me, that was the most powerful, immediate experience of manifestation that I'd ever experienced. Wow, that's great. <laughs> so, so what did it feel like when you were able to manifest that? Powerful. I mean, exciting because it was an overnight trip, which meant I got one of those great big beds. But um, oh, so empowering, powerful, and empowering, and a, a true sense of I have absolutely complete control over how my life pans out from now on. Wow. Can, can you live in that feeling more often? Can you exist in that feeling? I would like to, yes. So I think just what you said before is a good reminder of, of um, consciously taking time to do that more and more because we all get caught up in our daily lives and I, you know, I, have, I don't think I've done it much since, um, but I would like to. And how's the manifesting sense going? I, I need to learn more about that feeling thing, you know, how to, how to tap into that feeling that I want. Um, but but I think yeah I, I think yeah I think my life is changing and and I am manifesting more and more what I think about or what I try to feel. And I think the more you live into that and the more you feel that on a regular basis, the more you're gonna you're going to um, see manifestations happening a lot quicker. And with the the other thing is everybody thinks it has to take hard work, and it doesn't. You can have whatever you want in your life and you don't really have to put in a lot of effort. If you, so, so the key is you have to believe it before you see it. And I think you've all probably heard that from, this is yeah. not my words, we, you've all heard that. But that's really what it is. When you actually know it's happening is when it appears. Um, too often people focus in, and this is the other tip that I'll give. I don't know how this became a manifesting coaching call, but hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> The other tip on manifesting that I'm going to give you guys is watch your language. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people will talk about, I want to lose weight. And really what you're focusing <laughs> in, like, I want to lose 30 pounds, but wait, or I want to lose the 30 pounds I'm overweight. But you're focusing in on the 30 pounds that you have instead of, I weigh 135 pounds. So focus on what you want to become, not what you want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. It's not, I want to get rid of debt. It's, I have no bills to pay. Yeah. Um, that's really the, and that language is really important because, like I said, 
whatever your energy and whatever you're focusing in on is what you're given. And when you're focusing in on wanting to get rid of something, really what you're focusing in on is that something. So rephrase huh. that. I have no bills to pay and make that positive because that wasn't so positive, dude. I have, I, I am, I am, I, well, no, it is. I have no bills to pay. That to me, that's but a very it comes to me. It sounds like bills to pay. So I, I have, I owe no money. I, I don't know. It's it's better than I have to pay off thirty thousand dollars of debt. Yeah, like I I I'm easily I easily pay. I manage my my wealth. <laughs> <laughs> I have ten thousand dollars more of income than I have to pay in bills. That's good. Or I have ten thousand dollars extra income each month, or something like that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of idea. So you want to find that right language and you want, and when you're doing some of that manifesting stuff, the other thing I would recommend is look at it from the fact of the feeling as well. I feel confident and secure because I have $10,000 of extra income every month. Mm -hmm. I feel energized and healthy because I ride my, my road bike three times a week. That kind Makes of idea. Because yeah. then I'm thinking about feeling healthy and enjoying the outdoors. And when I'm feeling that way, the universe is going to say, oh, God, he needs a bike to do that. So here you go. Have a bike. <laughs> <laughs> he likes that feeling. We want him to have that feeling. What is he? Oh, bike. Here you go. Have a bike. <laughs> so I kind of like this. I love Hangouts because I get to be animated and goofy. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that bike's coming your way. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, it's already here. I just haven't seen it yet. All right. <laughs> not on its way, because that's the other thing. If you say, like, I, I, I will have $10,000, okay, well, way to go. Sure. You will someday, but you gotta, you have to know it happened. It's, it, you have to talk as in the, the present current or even the past that it's already occurred, not the, you know, someday maybe it could in the future, because then you're just asking for it to be held off to the future. Yeah. So, so there you go. That's my thoughts. All right. Um, let's do a round of last words because we only have about three minutes left. So um, last words on just kind of everything we've been talking about, what your thoughts are. Um, we're going to start from just going by what I see. So, Wendy, you're first. What's your last word? Um, uh, uh, just one word. Or it could be a phrase. <laughs> uh, I call our uh, last phrase. That okay. word. Uh, a fruitful conversation in the context of coaching which touched on some really powerful foundation coaching stuff which is uh, relationships and uh, manifestation. Cool. Uh, Mindy, what do you got? Um, talk about uh, joining the right uh, vibrations. Um, I thought this was an uh, internet uh, hangout. <laughs> and. Uh, and it's all about uh, life coaching, which is uh, quite coincidentally tomorrow I'm actually starting a mentorship uh, uh, in a women's charity for young um, young ladies. Uh, so all this has been very helpful. Thank you. Great. Um, all right. Yeah, for Let's me, go. it's been a connecting and spiritually enlightening. Fabulous, Kelly. A whole new perspective, and thank you very much. You're welcome. And my last word is I came in, as you all saw at the beginning, having no clue what was going on at all. And <laughs> it turned out to be, I think, one of our the most powerful hangouts we've had. Mm -hmm. um, and all I did was set the intention that we were going to have a beneficial hangout. I didn't know what it was going to look like, and this is what it turned into. I think it was a perfect example of what we've been talking about throughout the hangout actually manifesting. I said, oh, you know what, I'm going to trust that this is going to be a good hangout because we've got great people, we've got folks who we're going to get somewhere and it turned out to be a really powerful place. So thank you all for participating and sharing. Thank you, Kelly, for kind of being vulnerable and open to, to reception of kind of our thoughts and ideas. And thanks everybody else for helping to contribute and, and adding to the conversation. Thank you very much, Sean, for thank leading. Thank you. All yeah, right, you guys. Fun. Next week, I don't know. Cool. Um, I might have a special guest. I might not have a special guest. I might have a different hat. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's we'll the it mas mastermind group next week, isn't it, Sean? Oh, it, it, is it? Oh, God. Yes. 
<laughs> I guess it is. Wow. Okay, so time flies. So I will be stepping out to do this from the mastermind. If um, you guys are on lunch and you're going to be here, come hang out with me. We might do a live hangout of like seven people around one computer. I don't know what it's going to look like. Oh, that'd be um, fun. <laughs> so if you guys are on break, come join me. If you're not, come join me. If you are, get out and break. Otherwise, we're just going to make it whatever it is. Maybe I'll pull somebody from the room. Maybe I'll just grab somebody from the hotel and pretend I'm interviewing them and see what's going on in their world. Um, Great. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank, you. Bye, -bye, Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, Wendy. I'll send you an email. Bye. Uh